How's it going, guys? Um, as promised, I just want to do a quick little guide on, I guess, a good way to understand and how to be efficient gearing uh, when you do get to level 70. There's a couple aspects of the game where people still kind of ask me a lot of questions. Um, so I just want to kind of touch up on some of these topics. It's it's really it's really super simple. It's not very complicated at all. But uh, yeah, I just want to kind of, I guess, show people what they could do when they hit the level 70 to you know start getting into PvP. So one of the first things that you can do is if you have access to gold is you can go to the auction house and you could buy a full set of auction house green gear. I think everything besides a weapon and trinkets. Uh, so you can literally just look up your armor proficiency. So for example, I'll go to mail search and it's called crimson. All right. It doesn't matter. I believe what item level you buy. You can just buy the cheapest stuff as long as it says it increases item level. As long as it incre uh, it says increases item level to 398, because gear scales higher in BGs and arena, which means so this 343 piece is 398. Um, your your gear won't be that great in like uh, you know questing and dungeoning and stuff like that. But this is a good way to just kind of jump right into um, PvP. Let me just see if any of this doesn't scale. The 340 stuff scales, even 337 scales. Yeah, so just buy whatever is the cheapest. As long as it scales, you can. Uh, go through and buy the stats that you want. Obviously, you can do Battlegrounds to get gear as well. I just want to show you guys one thing about Battlegrounds. I feel like, generally speaking, Alliance wins more often than Horde. So if you are a Horde and you want to queue as Alliance, you can go right here to the Mercenary Recruiter and click this guy right here. I'll show you on the map in case uh, you're not familiar. This sh you should be familiar with this place. This is the, the PvP place. And you can go ahead and fight alongside with the Alliance. So this is a the Mercenary Contract. Uh, just in case you guys didn't know, right here on the map, this is where you buy your honor gear. This is where you buy your conquest gear. But yeah, so you have the options to do BGs. Like like I said, uh, the Lions wins more often, so if you're Horde, you probably want to use that mercenary mode. And you also have um, bloody token gear. So bloody token gear is world PvP gear which also works in arena the set bonuses do not work in arena but it's barely worse than honor gear and it's pretty easily obtainable so for example honor gear scales to 411 this scales to 408 so it's really close it could save you a couple battlegrounds but not only that there's a couple pieces from the bloody token gear that might have the stats that you want we'll use cloth boots for example haste verse is uh, a very desirable piece for cloth uh cloth wearers there are no haste verse boots on the honor vendor or the conquest vendor so buying the world pvp bloody token boots allows you to have a pvp piece with haste verse so you can actually upgrade this gear right here on the vendor to a 421 piece so this is still slightly worse than conquest gear but if you're getting those ideal stats it's actually worth it uh, we'll talk about that in a second, just so you have an idea. So bloody tokens are from world PVP with war mode on. If that's something that you're kind of worried about, uh, you could definitely try and join a group. The world PVP quests are the ones with the two swords over them. So you see this right here, the double sword. So this world quest literally just has a piece on it, which is phenomenal. Like that means you bait, you go there, you do that, you get, you get a piece for free. Sometimes these PvP world quests give uh, bloody tokens. There was one over here today that literally just gave 500. That's a piece or two right off the bat. Every time you do a PvP world quest, it'll give you 50 tokens. Um, other than that, you can uh, kill assassins. You can loot the war crates that come out of the skies. And you kill other players in you know war mode on. And you get bloody tokens that way. So I would say... I don't think like trying to kill people for them is really a great efficient way to do it unless you're doing your spark quest. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I think just doing the PvP world quest, looking for the chest like that is probably the best way to do it. Otherwise, it'd probably be more efficient to do battlegrounds. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is this is actually still kind of a common question is, see, dude, do I have to upgrade my honor gear? And the answer is no. When you go into battlegrounds or you go into an arena, your gear is 100% upgraded. You don't need to spend any honor on it. If you want to upgrade your gear after you have a full set, just for the simple fact that you do do world quests and um, you do dungeons and things like that, whatever, and you're using PvP gear, by all means, go ahead and do that. I've actually upgraded a couple pieces just because I have, I have extra honor. I just queue all the time. It doesn't really matter. But just work on getting that full set. Don't worry about using any of the honor to use upgrades. It's just not worth it at all. Another thing I wanted to talk about, for gearing is that uh, I kind of like going for my conquest ring first just so I can have double stat rings um, because you can't have 
two of like two haste rings or two mastery rings. So I, I, I generally like to go for a ring first just so I can have the double stat rings. I will also say that most likely if you can, if you could find a piece that's higher item level just from PVE, it won't be the it won't be as high as a PvP piece, but you can get to 421. That could be a desirable a desirable piece that you might be interested in looking for. I haven't really done too much research on it because we're still so early in the uh, season, but there's probably some haste verse rings out there, maybe even a higher haste and lower verse ring, which I would actually potentially be more interested in. But just something uh, so you can get those desirable stats pretty quickly. Now, this is a really common question. What should I buy first with Conquest gear? And the only reason I'm putting this in my guide is to tell you that I don't really know. I don't know if there's a best way to do it. I don't know if there is, um, you know, if it should be the same for every single class and every single person. I think it is completely dependent on how you want to gear, what you get from your chests, what pieces you want to replace, uh, you know, potentially even what pieces of, of tier you want and things like that. I, I don't know if there's a perfect way to do it. You know, some people like doing their weapons first. Some people like doing, um, you know, for example, I like doing kind of like the off pieces first just because they have like really high verse, like the rings and the neck. But we'll talk about neck in a second. I like to kind of like fill in the gaps, basically. So I wouldn't really worry too much about what you're buying first with Conquest. It's um, it's really up to you. At the end of the day, like if you buy one piece and someone else buys another piece and they're like, you didn't buy this piece, you're going to get it all. It, it really it really should be. It, it doesn't matter, I don't think, uh, my personal opinion. Maybe for melee, melee weapon is the most important. I really, I really, really, really don't know. We're going to talk about the spark quest right now. So the spark quest is uh, right here from this guy. Actually, as a matter of fact, it might, it might be from this guy over here. And then you turn it in over here. Um, the spark quest is is a quest to obtain 100 sparks it gives you eight trophies trophies are used to upgrade your world quest gear you can see that uh each piece is a different amount helmet is 10 weapons are 14 you know things like that um you want to make sure you do this quest every single week it's a weekly quest it's it's pretty nice because you're basically getting an extra piece of conquest gear for free that week essentially by upgrading a piece from 408 to 421, which is ba basically uh, maximum item level. And in some cases, it's actually going to be your best piece, like we were talking about in those cloth uh, cloth boots. Um, so yeah, you can you could try and upgrade pieces that have the ideal stats. If if they really don't have ideal stats for you, for example, I don't think Evoker as a male haste piece class has anything that is better than max, like a uh, max conquest piece, but it's a good alternative for the time for basically doing a single quest, um, which means it's definitely worth it uh also a cool transmog as well and the spark quest here is so for example last week it was in the azure span um this week it is in thaldrasis and you you need to loot chest in thaldrasis you can do world quest in thaldrasis you have to do it in the specific zone if it was in waking shores you'd be doing in waking shores so you can loot chest you know do the dirt um, you can kill players. We'll talk about that in a second. And you could do world quest. Um, you could kill assassins and you can loot the, uh, the, the airdrop. Um, I would say the best way to do it is literally go to the zone, look for a custom group, find a group and literally just type in spark. Okay. Everyone's trying to do this quest. Just go ahead and get in a group of five. And what happens is you get into a group of five and you go to, um, it's really hot when there's a PvP world quest there. If there's no PvP world quest there that day, it's probably not that great to do. So you want to check every day. Um, because the PvP world quest makes it free for all. There was one in Thaldrasis today. So you just type in Spark, you get in a group, and then you just try and farm kills. That that's a really good way to do it. You know, you can you can fly around, do it casually, loot the boxes if you're not a huge fan of PvP. Um, but definitely just look for these groups. The same thing for um, the other PvP quests. Don't don't try and do it on your own. It's gonna be it's gonna be a nightmare. And then uh, let's go ahead and talk about the crafted gear because this is uh, this is a pretty common question as well and also a little confusing pl uh, for players. So basically every single armor proficiency has two pieces of crafted gear which are called infurious pieces. So what you do is you go to the, uh, the work order auction house. You can see right here, crafting orders. And go ahead and type in infurious. You could also just make it a little bit easier and do your armor proficiency, but I'm just showing you the options here. Um, and every single armor proficiency has a piece of gear that reduces CC by 5%, which is generally pretty good. And then every armor proficiency also has another piece 
um, that has a, you know, a random effect, but unfortunately only, only the cloth one is good. So the leather one makes you deal 1% more damage, completely useless, useless. Uh, the cloth one procs haste, which is insane. The plate one, uh, sometimes does a little bit of physical damage. That one's actually okay. Um, the male helmet gives you versatility when you kill someone completely useless in arena. If you like BGs, it could be good for you. Um, but yeah, basically this is something that you want to craft. Um, if you're not a cloth wearer, I would recommend your second craft. So you obviously want to craft the CC reduction first. I would recommend your second craft be the armor miscellaneous neck. And this is going to be a stat proc necklace, which is obviously really good. And uh, this is lower item level in PvP. I should have mentioned on the Infurious pieces that they scale up. Doesn't matter what item level you craft it at. Um, this is a lower item level. And if you're a PvPer, you get um, you get these mats from boxes winning every four games. Primal Focus is 2100 to 2400. And Concentrated Primal Focus is 2400 plus. And when you're trying to craft this necklace here, um, if you have these pieces it increases the item level. So if you get the, the best stuff, 2400 plus, this will be a 418 piece, a little bit worse than max item level PvP gear, but you're gonna be proccing really good stats because it procs a, you know, it procs a gem from your necklace that can give you that stat. I think it's nerfed by 50% in PvP. And uh, what's really crazy about that is there's also a crafted gem, which can give you main stat, which means you're proccing main stat. Um, all the crafted pieces have uh, tiers of what you can craft at. Um, you know, they get better from tier one to three. The only, t the only time that doesn't matter is for the inferior pieces because they get max level. I know the, the, the tier one to three is a little bit confusing. Um, and then also if you're looking to, to do this stuff, you, excuse me, you go ahead and click it. You track recipe. You can buy everything off of the auction house except the spark of ingenuity. Spark of ingenuities are... From a quest, from finishing your campaign, you need to have finished your campaign at least one time. Uh, it works on all your alts. If you haven't gotten a spark yet, all you got to do is fly over here. It is the easiest quest in the entire world. I haven't actually done my second spark quest yet, but you can have two right now, and then you get one every two weeks. So we'll actually be getting another one this Tuesday coming up. Um, you just talk to this person right here. It's a unbelievably easy quest to do. The first quest is you literally go to Azure Span, and it's going to pop you up in the air and you gotta fly through some rings this next quest is you go to on whatever planes and you just kill a mob so you need the spark that's the only thing that uh, is BOP and the rest you can track and you just go ahead and buy from the auction house um, and then you go ahead and get that crafted piece made so it's it's really simple in that regard it's a work order so you put in a work order someone crafts it for you you give them a tip uh, it'll show up in your mailbox you won't have it immediately it's not like buying something from the regular auction house Lastly, we're going to talk about enchants and, and uh, gemming. A lot of people are uh, asking me questions about that. I would say the main question is, uh, how do you get three sockets on your necklace? So what that's going to be is you literally go to the auction house, you type in the word setting, and they're right here, the, uh, the setting. So for example, if you wanted three, you could buy a tier two, a tier two, and a tier three, as long as you put that tier three in last. As long as you put that tier three in last, you could put all three in, so you don't need to buy all tier threes in order to do that. Uh, you could buy a 1, a 2, and a 3 do the same thing, but generally for some reason the tier 2s are cheaper than the tier 1s, so you're just saving a little bit of gold. But you just got to make sure you put them in from worst to best in that order. Um, and then a lot of people are like, yo, I, I can't find gems on the auction house. I'm looking for versatility gems. Where are the new ones? Um, these are all the old gems. For some reason, I don't know why. You just have to like search other, I believe. I Yeah, they just they just pop up. So I wouldn't recommend putting really expensive stuff into your replaceable gear if you don't have gold i just kind of buy gold from tokens so i don't really care that much uh but then we'll talk about enchants for a second um so enchants are a little bit more expensive you can see all the item enhancements you can do here you have wrist which is mainly speed chest which is a main stat cloak which is speed weapon uh which is main stat proc and then fingers and legs oh boots also have stamina so those are all the enchants you can get I'm just going to go to weapon right now. So the epic tier threes are incredibly expensive. I would steer clear of those unless you have an excess amount of gold or an irreplaceable weapon. Uh, and then from there on, like, just, just look at some tier twos. You know, don't don't waste your gold on it. Don't be Sam I am. So basically, uh, Sophic Devotion, 932 main stat, 99,000 gold. Just go ahead and look at a tier two. It's 30,000 gold and 857 main stat. And if that's still too much for you, 
and you can go down to that tier one, which is unfortunately the same amount of gold, uh, or you can go to the tier three blue and try and find uh, you know a deal that way. That's actually still twenty one thousand gold, so they're they're pretty hefty towards the higher end. Um, you can go to a tier two devotion that's still fourteen k. That's really expensive. Um, so excuse me, tier one silver grid still at twelve five. So the weapon enchants are kind of expensive. The difference here is like three hundred uh, in though. So it's end it's ending up being a pretty big deal, but. Yeah, this is the most expensive enchant for for sure. So, for example, like if we go to fingers, uh, rings, it'll be a lot cheaper for a tier three. It's like one thousand gold. So the weapon enchant is the uh, really expensive one. So I I hope this kind of answered some questions. It's really simple to get gear at max level, um, unless you're Sam. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's really easy to get to get gear at max level. Um, just keep your eye out for. The PvP World Quest, so you can get some bloody tokens if you're interested in that gear. Make sure you do your sparks every week. Um, I would recommend buying the AH gear so when you go into BGs, you don't get absolutely rolled. Um, you don't have to upgrade your gear. You don't got to spend honor on that. Buy whatever you want with Conquest. I'm not really going to talk about tier pieces because tier is different for every single uh, character. Uh, what I will say is that the only way you could obtain PvP tier right now is through the Vault. Um, the creation catalyst, if you played Shadowlands, comes out in four weeks, which means you would be able to transform your Conquest PvP gear, for example, these gloves, into tier gear. Uh, I kind of forgot to mention Primal Chaos. Primal Chaos you can't get from the auction house. That's what you use for crafted pieces. You just get so many of these now from doing anything that I didn't really think it was worth mentioning. If you're doing Arena, you're going to get a ton of them. If you're doing any, any type of content, you're going to get a ton of them. And then, yeah, get your crafted gear, get your enchanted gems, and you are good to go. I hope you guys enjoyed um dragonflight is incredibly alt friendly it is uh it is incredibly low maintenance so it's been a lot of fun in that regard so yeah um good luck have fun